On June 22, 2019, Hyunjin Ryu completed his 15th straight start with two or less earned runs, a streak that began at the start of the year. Since the start of the integration era in 1947, only two other players have had a lower ERA in their first 15 starts to a season. In second place is Bob Gibson, who in 1968 pitched what some call the greatest season ever. A 100 ERA plus is considered average, so a 258 ERA plus meant Gibson was 158% better than the league average pitcher in 1968. But there's still one player who had a better ERA than Gibson and Ryu, and that's Jacob deGrom. With a 1.08 ERA, he had an ERA plus of 373, meaning he was 273% better than the average pitcher in 2021. With stats like these, DeGrom was on a path towards baseball immortality. But instead, we remember his 2021 season as one of the biggest what-ifs in baseball history. And today, we're going to find out why. On the outside corner, strike three called, and that is the 1500th career strikeout for Jacob DeGrom. And make it 14 as he gets Anderson looking. By 2021, everyone recognized the greatness of Jacob deGrom. He's a two-time Cy Young winner with some of the nastiest pitches the game of baseball has ever seen. Only four starting pitchers have had a better ERA plus than deGrom in their first seven seasons. Three Hall of Famers and future Hall of Famer Clayton Kershaw. While deGrom was entering his eighth season at an age normally considered past a player's peak, he was was still improving. In 2014, DeGrom's four-seam fastball velocity averaged around 94 miles per hour. In 2019, he threw his first 100 miles per hour pitch. Then in 2020, he threw 33 pitches over 100 miles per hour, the most among all starting pitchers that season. By spring training in 2021, DeGrom was throwing 102 miles per hour fastballs and sliders that topped out in the mid 90s, numbers that exceeded the league average fastball velocity. Once you add in a changeup that averaged 91 miles per hour, you get a repertoire that led all starting pitchers in velocity in 2020. However, in order to consistently strike out batters, you need more than just velocity. If you can tunnel your pitches to follow the same path, you can make batters look incredibly foolish. Let's compare DeGrom's release points in random games from three different seasons. As you can see, by 2020, DeGrom's tunneling ability was close to perfect. And when you couple this with his velocity and movement, you can see how he's become virtually unhittable. This was reflected in DeGrom's first start of the 2021 season. Seven strikeouts, only three hits, and no earned runs in six innings. A great performance all around, but his second outing was quite the improvement. He did allow a home run to Jazz Chisholm Jr., but apart from that, it was a barrage of filthy fastballs, sliders, and changeups, resulting in 14 strikeouts and no walks in eight innings. He continued this dominance into his next start by essentially replicating the same stats, notably by once again tying his career high of 14 strikeouts. In MLB history, only 15 pitchers have struck out at least 14 batters in a six or less inning start. With two straight 14 strikeout games, DeGrom had started off the year in incredible fashion. But if there's anyone who could possibly outdo multiple 14 strikeout performances, it's Jacob DeGrom. on the ground, Alonzo to his left, flip to DeGrom, and the ball game is over. In terms of game score, this was the best start of DeGrom's career. This 15 strikeout performance was not only a career high, it extended his streak to three straight games with at least 14 strikeouts. The only pitchers ever to have a streak of this nature are DeGrom, Garrett Cole, and Pedro Martinez. Also, DeGrom had thrown 50 strikeouts in four starts. In MLB history, no one has thrown this many strikeouts in the first four starts of a season. Combine this with only three walks allowed, and this is why his ERA was nearly non-existent. 
The only player to have a comparable start like this was Corbin Burns. With how these two were pitching, they were early favorites for the National League Cy Young Award. Unfortunately, the Mets weren't scheduled to face the Brewers until early July, so a matchup between these two would have to wait. Plus, it's still early in the season, so who knows if these two can sustain their success until their future matchup. After all, it takes more than talent to sustain an elite season. Following a great performance at the end of April, DeGrom said he felt some soreness on his right side, which he assumed was usual wear and tear. However, an MRI revealed mild inflammation in his right lat. Whenever the word inflammation is thrown around when discussing a pitching injury, it's easy to fear the worst. Luckily, this injury wasn't arm related, but injuries like this serve as reminders of the fragile nature of a baseball season. DeGrom said this inflammation was due to improper mechanics, so he ended up missing just one start. And when he came back to the mound, he picked up where he left off. He walked a few more hitters than usual, but the pitches were still as alive as ever. His bat was still alive too, as he hit a bunt single and even scored later in the inning. However, a couple innings later, DeGrom was taken out of the game early with tightness in his right side. He was placed on the 10-day IL, but it was out of precaution as his MRI came back clean. DeGrom and the Mets seemingly escaped disaster, but now the lingering thought of a potential season-ending injury was inescapable. Although, if there's any consolation to the situation, as part of his recovery, DeGrom pitched a rehab start in low A ball. This meant he was throwing 100 miles per hour fastballs to players multiple levels down the professional baseball ladder. It went as you'd expect, with the Palm Beach Cardinals Twitter account pleading for help as DeGrom was throwing 102. Well, I imagine some of the Rockies players DeGrom faced were thinking the same thing when he returned on May 25th. The pitch count was raised for his final start of May against the Diamondbacks, holding them to no runs in six innings. Then, in two straight starts against the Padres, DeGrom allowed a combined four hits, no runs, and struck out 21 batters. Despite missing a few starts, DeGrom led all qualified starters in nearly every stat imaginable, as his combination of velocity and command had never really been seen before. In fact, in his first start against the Padres on June 5th, Fifth, DeGrom threw 33 pitches over 100 miles per hour, the most in a single game in the pitch tracking era through the 2021 season, surpassing the 27 100 miles per hour pitches he threw in his previous start. As for average fastball velocity in a single game, DeGrom was the only starter to average 100 miles per hour, and he did it twice. While he didn't showcase the same velocity in his second start against the Padres, he ended the day with a 0.5. 0.56 ERA, the lowest ERA in the first 10 starts of a season in the live ball era. Unfortunately, following the game, it was revealed DeGrom had a flexor tendon injury in his throwing arm. Now that's a noteworthy injury, as in 2020, Chris Sale had a flexor strain in his throwing arm and eventually needed Tommy John surgery. DeGrom wasn't worried given his elbow issues in the past, and to be fair, he made his next start on schedule but he was taken out of the game early, this time with right shoulder soreness. Regardless of these injuries, he continued to make starts on schedule, but it was likely influencing his performance on the mound. On June 26th, he allowed multiple earned runs for the first time all season. He did the same thing on July 1st too, but he struck out 14 batters for his fourth 14 strikeout game of the season, something that's been done only 20 times in MLB history. Notably, in this game, DeGrom pitched seven innings and threw 93 pitches, the most he had thrown in over two months. With DeGrom seemingly in the clear health-wise, he was set to face off with Corbin Burns in a long-awaited showdown, who at this point had set records of his own. The result was a no decision for both but they proved why they were the Cy Young favorites. Although, looking through the lens of the entire season, DeGrom seemed untouchable. With over 14 strikeouts per nine and just under 1.1 walks per nine, he was on a historic path like no other. No one has ever ended a full season with numbers like this. No one in the integration era has had a better ERA in their first 15 starts to a season. DeGrom's 373 ERA plus was unheard of 
glove for a starting pitcher, as well as the 185 100 plus miles per hour fastballs he threw in just 15 starts. He was in a league of his own and was on a path towards the best pitching season in baseball history. However, DeGrom wasn't the one holding the Cy Young Award after the season. It was Corbin Burns. In early September, it was revealed DeGrom was dealing with a UCL sprain in the right elbow, also known as a partial tear. Like I said, it's easy to forget the fragile nature of a season, both in terms of performance and health. Nolan Ryan became the strikeout king not just because of his pitching ability, but his durability as well. The ability to stay on the field for a whole season or even multiple seasons in a row is due to a combination of sound mechanics and luck. Only one of these factors is in a player's control. This is why everything needs to be near perfect for a Cy Young or MVP season. But even those guys have slumps or even minor injuries throughout the year. When a player is in the running for a potentially historic season, one minor deterrence can ruin everything. Now we look at these incredible numbers and wonder what could have happened. Perhaps he continues on the same path he was on and challenges Bob Gibson and Pedro Martinez for the greatest pitching season ever. Or maybe he goes the route of Hyunjin Ryu, who had an incredible 15 start streak to begin the 2019 season, but in start number 16, he gave up seven earned runs, something he did two more times in that season. Given that DeGrom's ERA in his first 15 starts surpassed Gibson and Ryu, there's no way of knowing where DeGrom's season would have ended up. Nonetheless, DeGrom plans to pitch for many years to come, and with how he's begun this season, it's clear he still possesses both the velocity and command. How many games he ends up pitching this year is anybody's guess. So be sure to appreciate the games he does play, because as we've seen, no one is immune to the fragile nature of baseball. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did, and subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks for watching.